There's a prominent current within Christianity that maybe 20 or 30 years ago would have been seen as innovative, but today is as common as the plethora of church signs that you see its messaging plastered on. It's what I would call come as you are church culture. It's this idea that you don't need to make any extra effort in how you dress or how you appear when you come to church. Just treat it like any other day and show up as you are. And it was this context that I was first introduced to Christianity and to church life when I was a young adult first exploring different denominations. And in a way, I'm grateful for it because it broke down barriers of intimidation for me. It made me feel comfortable enough to just show up and not worry about what other people might think about me. And not so much because I was unwilling to make that extra bit of effort, but more so because I thought that whatever effort I made might be the wrong one and then people would judge me for it. The point for me in going to church was to learn how to be a Christian. And while I appreciated this emphasis on not worrying about how I was dressed, at the same time, it was teaching me a lesson because that's what I was looking for from the church. The lesson was, it doesn't matter how you dress when you go to church. And now that I've been a Christian for a while now, my understanding of that has shifted a bit. So if you'll bear with me, I wanna try and explain why. Before I keep going with it, I want to just take a minute to give a big shout out to this week's sponsor, which is Hello. St. Augustine says something like, what is more profitable to our lives, what is sweeter to our souls, and what is more sublime to our whole life than the practice of prayer, implying that there is nothing more profitable to our lives. He also admitted that there are distractions out there that will compete with our habit of prayer, which are relentless. He said something like, even the straws under my knees shout at me to distract me from prayer. So if you're struggling with developing a habit of prayer, I really want to urge you to try and find ways to create that habit. And one such tool can be an app like Hallow, which is designed to compete with all those digital tools and digital distractions that are out there that draw us away from prayer and refocus our attention back to prayer using that same mechanism. There are a lot of creative and useful features in the app as it helps to customize a prayer routine based on your specific goals and needs. And then it helps you stay on track. And if that doesn't convince you, then I imagine that bedtime stories read to you by Father Mike Schmitz that should do the trick. Hello, uh, and that's welcome nice. to tonight's so sleep calming. story. My name is Father Mike Schmitz. So I would invite you, I would strongly encourage you to try something out like the Hallow app. It's got a forever free version downloadable at all the locations where you normally get your apps. But for those who want to take it to the next level and really enhance their prayer life, there is a commercial version that unlocks even more features. And if you want to try out that commercial version, they've generously offered a trial version of that to listeners of this channel. If you go to hallow.com slash Brian, um, you can sign up from there and I'll try to leave a link in the description for this video. I said earlier that this emphasis on come as you are was an innovative concept and, and that's true. Prior to the 20th century, nobody down through the centuries, church leaders and saints, church fathers and the apostles, nobody would have agreed with this idea. And that should tell us something. The argument for this seems to follow from the claim that God doesn't care what we look like. He doesn't judge a book by its cover. He isn't impressed by our extra efforts to look smart or sophisticated. God isn't so trivial that he needs us to dress a certain way before he'll accept our worship. And there's some truth to that. God doesn't need anything from us. Just like with worship, we don't worship him because God needs us to worship him. We do it because we need to worship him. So if there's any merit to dressing a certain way, it's not for God's benefit but ours. There's a reason why we dress a certain way for a job interview or for a wedding or for a funeral or for any other special occasion. The way we dress produces an attitude in us and in those that we interact with. For example, if you showed up to a job interview wearing a dirty tracksuit, that would communicate to the people you're interacting with uh, an attitude of indifference and of laziness. As another example, think about how you might dress for a funeral. However you address, it should mark the exceptional nature of what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's not every day that a life passes and it gives us an opportunity to reflect and to grieve in ways that are distinct from everyday life. The way that we dress on such occasions creates an atmosphere and an attitude that reflects the nature of what it is and what we're doing. It's like a visual incarnation about our feelings and the solidarity that we experience with each other and the ways that we support and express our mutual feelings about the events and the occasion. 
how we dress affects our psychology, our emotions, our social interactions, and I would argue our spiritual disposition. It can create attitudes and feelings associated with humility and pride, with pleasure and with work, and with celebration or with grief. So if we can admit that, then we should similarly be able to admit that how we dress for church will affect our attitude as well as those around us as we approach that time for prayer. And if we can admit that, then we should be able to admit that it's worth asking the question, how is it that we should dress for church? And to meaningfully answer that question, I think we need to remind ourselves what it is that we are doing when we gather as a faith community. While I wouldn't consider this an exhaustive list and it will vary from community to community, I would say that we're there to repent, to worship and adore the living God, and to receive his blessing and grace so that we can then go out and continue to live and grow in discipleship. So what best reflects and encourages those activities and that disposition? And that's where it gets kind of tricky because we can't dictate a one size fits all uniform for everyone everywhere. What works for people in Northern Canada where I live in the dead of winter is not gonna work for people in Mexico. What works for people in Sub-Saharan Africa isn't gonna work exactly the same for people in Scotland. So instead of describing exactly what a church uniform looks like, I'd rather articulate some principles that we can use to inform our own decisions. Firstly, we need to remember that what we're doing on Sunday is different from what we do on other days. It's a day specifically set apart for a distinct purpose. The third commandment tells us that it is a day that we need to keep holy, and holy literally means set apart. If this day is to be set apart, then that means that our behavior should reflect the uniqueness of this day. That means that the way that we dress should be different from what it is from Monday to Saturday. This will help us to appreciate the distinct nature of that day and what it is that we're doing when we gather and worship. The next principle I'd want to articulate is to dress modestly. This is not a red carpet banquet or gala. We are beggars before God, not peacocks. We are not there to impress him or to impress other people. So the less attention we can bring upon ourselves, the better. We are there to repent. And don't interpret that as meaning that you should be dressed casually. That's what you would do if I was encouraging laziness or indifference, which are quite different from humility and modesty. If you're wearing a t-shirt when everyone else is formally dressed, then that's just going to draw attention to yourself, which is not modesty. It's the opposite. In closing, can I just say one more thing? And I think that this is an important thing that everybody needs to, to keep in mind. If you agree with the principles and these ideas that I've, that I've outlined here in this, in this video, none of us should use that as a permission to give other people a hard time about the way that they're dressed at church. If you want to encourage people to understand this and to embrace these ideas, then lead by example, not by condemnation. Nobody, at least that I can think of, will respond favorably to snarky remarks about the way that they're dressed or to glaring across the room because it doesn't meet with your approval. God will accept whatever sophomoric efforts we make to encounter him. And that's something that we should rejoice in. If people are coming, we should give thanks for that. God will lead them in his grace to understand these things and to grow in humility. And if they progress and if they take their faith seriously, then they will learn about personal virtue and incarnational theology, and they will learn from the example of those that are worshiping with them. That's what happened in my case, and it probably wouldn't have progressed very far if people gave me a hard time early on. And by the grace of God, it will continue to happen as I learn to let go of my pride. Thank you so much for watching that. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you got something out of it. And if you did, and you wanna consume more content like this, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Or if you saw this on Facebook, then like my page and follow along. If you're on YouTube, it's not enough anymore to subscribe because YouTube wants to think that it can tell you what you should watch instead of what you actually want to watch. So in this case, you actually have to hit that little bell to be notified as to whether or not I've uploaded something more recently. So please subscribe and hit the bell at 
the same time, that really helps me out a lot. And if you could consider sharing this among your social network, that helps me a lot too. And if you wanna support the making of these videos, please consider supporting my business, which is a communications and strategic marketing company who specializes especially in branding and web design. And this is especially catered towards ministries and apostolates and parishes. We have a parish web design system that we've built specifically for parishes and churches that is affordable, but also beautifully packaged and easy to use. So if you're interested in that, check out my business, which is holdsworthdesign.com and hit the contact uh, button in the navigation and get in touch and, and we can figure out if there's a good fit for you there.